Yeah, you know, it's a book I just always wanted to write. You know, just like most fishermen, I grew up catching crap, eating bluegill, perch. Uh, it just comes naturally. Uh, yeah, I can remember as a kid, we lived uh, on one of the TVA lakes, and down the trail, just a little piece from our house, uh, there was a rock wall. When the lake would come up in the summertime, bluegill would move in on that rock wall, and occasionally a bass, a big carp every once in a while. I take a good book down there, sit and read my book, throw out a number seven hook with a red worm under a float, and just read till the float went under, reel in the fish, catch a stringer of fish, take them home, that's what was dinner. Yeah, I still, even now, you know, I used to bass fish pretty hard, and now I rock fish pretty hard, but uh, it just, there's nothing like getting back on the streams and fishing for perch, crappy, just takes you right back to your roots. Pretty much everybody knows how to catch panfish. I don't know too many people that don't have a secret weapon for catching perch or crappie or bluegill. And the reason there's so many secret weapons out there is because they all work. There's no one best way to do it. I've got my favorite way and I bet you do too. But um, I thought it might be fun since I get to talk to a lot of people at my fishing shows and seminars and stuff. Like, to collect those secret weapons, put them all together in a book, maybe talk about a few techniques that are popular in other parts of the country that you don't see too much here. And then also, you know, when I got started doing that, I thought it'd be fun to chase back some of the history of the lures and the techniques and explain where they come from, how they got here to the Chesapeake Bay. It was, frankly, the research was pretty interesting. Eva, Eva Nichols. What a fantastic job she did illustrating the book. Uh, not only did she draw some incredible fish pictures, all different species, but she also illustrated the different kinds of rigs. For example, a top and bottom rig, fish finder rig. Her art has definitely added another dimension to the book. And bass, not just about perch and crappie and bluegill. Uh, there's a chapter about shad fishing because I don't know too many fishermen who fish for panfish who don't also fish for shad. And there's also an entire chapter about other species you might encounter uh, when you're out there uh, fishing for panfish. Uh, for example, chain pickerel. There's also a chapter on gudgeon fishing, one of my favorite chapters. Thanks to Ted Corcoran for taking me gudgeon fishing. Uh, a gudgeon is just a small minnow that uh, used to be very popular. Uh, to catch and eat in Maryland. You don't hear about it too much anymore, but there's still some people out there who do it. I've been very fortunate to get some amazing help along the way. Uh, Joe Evans, the senior editor for Chesapeake Bay Magazine, pitched in with a way too nice forward for the book. Um, Austin Green, a fantastic photographer and an excellent fisherman, joined me on the creek bank last winter, took some incredible pictures. I uh, used one of them for the back of the book, and there's another one inside the book. Jim Gronaw, who's probably the best pan fisherman on the East Coast, sent me some pictures and offered some advice. Jay Yesker, an amazing young pan fisherman, sent me some pictures, and so did several others. And then there's all my regular fishing partners who I've enjoyed fishing with so much and learned so much from, and all the people who have given me advice and offered assistance along the way. And to everyone, I say thanks so much. I'm Sean Kimbrough, and this is my new book, How to Catch Chesapeake Panfish.